Alright guys, so today we are talking about Galactic Command, which is one of the new features that is being introduced with Knights of the Eternal Throne. So for this video, I'm just going to be going through some of the information that has been data mined about. And to be honest, all it is really is it's a different way of grinding in-game activities. And so right now, people do heroics, flashpoints, all that kind of stuff. And it can get quite boring at times, it can get quite stale. And so this is Bioware's way of kind of spicing it up, giving you an actual purpose to doing these kinds of things. Uh, beforehand, it was a Dark vs. Light event. They wanted people to replay all this old content. And so they introduced the Dark vs. Light event, which kind of made it c worthwhile, but also not really because the rewards weren't that great. But the Galactic Command is now kind of their permanent way of allowing these high level, you know, veteran players who've already done all this stuff to kind of do it again, but have a different purpose to it. So let's get into what it is. A Galactic Command is a new system that's been introduced. You'll be grinding a lot of various in-game activities, and the whole point of it is to level up your command rank. Now you begin at a command rank of 1, and you can level it up to 100. But in order to reach like a command rank of 100, you need to hit at least 51,870 points, which is a ton of points. And when I go through the different activities and how many points to give, you'll realize that that is not going to be an easy milestone to reach. And another thing is, your rank is tied to your character, it is not going to be legacy wide. So if you grind on one character, you finally hit rank 100, you're going you're gonna to get a really nice little icon next to your name that shows that you've reached that milestone. That's only going to be tied to that one single character. So if you want to do it for everyone, you're going to need to do it all over again. Um, now, yeah, so you get command points basically by doing various in-game activities and those command points are going to all add up and they're going to increase your command rank. You need to be level 70 to do this, so it's not going to be able to be done at level 60 or 65 or when you're playing Knights of the Fallen Empire and stuff. And you can only uh, earn them if you're a premium player, which is just a fancy way of saying you need to be subscribed. Now, in your nameplay right now, when you have completed all eight of the class stories, you get a very nice legendary player icon, and everyone can kind of see it, and it shows that you're a real fan of the game, you've played through all of the class stories. Well, now there's going to be another icon, and depending upon your command rank, it's probably going to look a little bit different, uh, but when you hit 100, it's probably going to look really nice and fancy, and you're going to be able to show off that you've actually reached that milestone. Now, you get points from completing all these different activities. For example, Knights of the Fallen Empire and Knights of the Eternal Throne episodes or chapters. These will give you around 10 to 30 points. And one of the biggest features that's being introduced right now is that Knights of the Fallen Empire and Knights of the Eternal Throne can be replayed on the same character. So you can reset chapters, you can reset entire seasons and play through it all again and make different choices and stuff. And I guess that's Bioware's way of kind of saying you don't need to level up a whole bunch of tunes and play them through the exact same story just to make different choices and see how those choices will affect the game. Instead, you can just have one character, you can just reset the story on him if you want to and make different choices. But basically, playing through those chapters, kind of grinding that out uh, in different ways, is going to actually give you these points to um, increase your command rank. Uh, uprisings, obviously, the new group content that we're getting, that's going to give you around 10 to 30 points, only if you're doing it in solo mode, though. Uh, flashpoints solo or tactical and then star fortresses which a solo or expert those will give you like 20 to 60 points around that area now the dailies black hole section x oricon that kind of stuff and planetary heroics those will give you anywhere from 25 to 75 points um, now unlike knights of the fallen empire it says you can no longer pick and choose the shortest heroics which i know a lot of people have been doing uh, you know, when they want to grind credits and stuff, there's no point in doing a heroic that's going to take like four times the amount of time as the other ones. It's more profitable just to go and do a different heroic. But uh, but for th in order to get the points to increase your command rank, um, the starter planets like Ord Mantel, Korriban and stuff no longer count, and you need to do all the planets on all the heroics on a certain planet in order to get the points. So you basically have to do everything. You can't just pick and choose. Uh, operations are going to give you 40 points. Um, and finally, Galactic Starfighter and War Zones will give you anywhere from 35 to 45 points. So in addition to doing those activities, you also are going to get things called Command Trophies. Now these are uh, trophies that might drop from bosses, they might drop from uh, mobs or stuff like that, uh, Flashpoint bosses for example, and, um, and for Flashpoint bosses will drop com uh, these trophies that will give you anywhere from 10 to 50 points, Operation bosses will drop trophies that give you anywhere from 20 to 100 points, uh, Uprising bosses will give you trophies that drop uh, 8 to 40 points. So you get the kind of picture, you're going to be doing these types of things, these activities that give you points, and then you can kill a boss, and kind of like a reputation trophy, you can get these command trophies that will give you even more points and try to boost your score. 
Uh, each day, each day, a different activity will be highlighted. So similar to when you have Group Finder and you have like a certain operation, that's the operation of that week or something. You're gonna have a different activity and highlighted activities. It's not known now really what it's gonna do, but uh, but they kind of speculate that it will grant you more points or it might tie to the whole galactic alignment system, which I'll talk about later, which is basically the whole light versus dark thing. Uh, now there are different schedules and stuff, I'm not going to go through that, that's all boring. But let's get into the galactic alignment, which is basically dark versus light server alignment. Now this is not to be confused with the dark versus light event. Uh, this has nothing to do with that. This is something that's completely different and it's going to be a lot more permanent. So while you're out there doing your activities, your heroics and flashpoints and stuff, and queuing up for war zones, you'll collect dark and light side points, and these will go towards the server's overall darker light alignment. So w you can select whether you're going to be light or dark side uh, via a toggle, and it's going to be next to your character's portrait, and you can also do the same thing when you're queuing for a war zone. And there will be a 5-10% to 10 boost on something depending on the current darker light tier. So for example, you know right now when you're in game and you're making decisions in your story, well you can have different uh, light or dark tiers right you could be dark 5 dark 4 dark 3 or something and there's even some weapons and relics and stuff that if you want to use them you have to be a certain uh, dark or light uh, level well right now we're going to have a very similar system with this galactic command which is basically uh, as you gain more light or dark light or dark points you're going to reach different tiers and then those tiers will give you a certain boost but whether that might be experience or or eternal command points or something like that we don't know uh, that's probably going to be that information is going to be released later so once again this kind of stuff is a little bit more speculative uh, it's not it kind of is subject to change but right now what it kind of seems to be is that the whole alignment of, of the server whether it's dark or light is going to be reset daily so it's only based upon how many people decided to make light or dark side choices on that day um, and then people who pr basically win, like let's say someone is dark side and the server alignment was dark side on that day, well they will get rewarded depending upon the tier that they are at, so whether they're dark 3, dark 4, or dark 5, and, uh, the, and basically the alignment that the server is at. And there are a bunch of new rewards. There are things like these legacy bound command lockboxes that contain various bind on equip armor set and weapons. So what this means is uh, these things are not going to be bound to you permanently. You can send them across your different characters and you can also put them up on the GTN to sell. Uh, these lockboxes will be opened with the new pack opening experience and there is going to be a new slot which is called the command stash which may be used for collecting the items from these lockboxes so it won't be taking up a ton of cargo space it won't even be taking up space from your item stash which you already have for those cartel market items instead it's going to be added to a whole new place so that's really going to save a lot of cargo space and then obviously they need to make money so they're going to make um, additional slots available on the cartel market now, uh, during Knights of the Fallen Empire, we know that when the heroics were kind of changed around, you receive these lockboxes, and those lockboxes give you legacy-bound armor pieces. Well, this reward system is going to kind of continue in Knights of the Eternal Throne, but now the armor sets, instead of being legacy-bound, are going to be bind on equip. You'll also receive weapons, which is another marketed improvement, uh, much better than receiving like those green companion gifts we get, and then some kind of ugly-looking legacy gear that, you, that I think everyone just kind of vendors. Um, and also the rewards are cumulative so, accumulative, so what that means is at Dark 5, you will get 5 lockboxes. You'll get the Tier 1, the Tier 2, the Tier 3, the Tier 4, and the Tier 5 lockboxes. And if, for example, if you're just at Tier 3, if that's where you reach at, at the end of the day, well then you're only going to get 3 lockboxes, right? Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3. Uh, galactic alignments, uh, it's kind of similar to the whole thing of conquest. I'm just kind of reading this off the Reddit post, but they kind of make a really good point. It is basically the conquest, uh, but it's individual. So you don't have to be part of a guild. You aren't reliant on guild and whether guild members are active or not. This is basically a very similar system, but it's limited to now the individual player, and they can decide how much they want to participate in it. So that's kind of all the information we have at this moment of uh, Galactic Command and I'm really happy this information came out because I was quite disappointed with the whole New York Cantina and the fact that apparently we were supposed to get a ton of information about Knights of the Eternal Throne and all we got was a cinematic and then uh, I think Moscow was saying something like we're going to get a new blog post about it in a few weeks but I really want the information now so I'm really happy this stuff got data mined and um, I'm really excited to put out this video because this is one of the biggest features that is coming in Knights of the Eternal Throne. It's one of the kind of big things that's supposed to change how we interact with the game uh, and it's supposed to make playing all this old content a lot more fun and so it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out and maybe some of the changes that are going to come with it uh, when Knights of the Eternal Throne actually releases. I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys found it informative. I will see you in the next one.